Hi. Hello. Tournament circuits are ending, new sets are approaching, both in English and in Japanese, and it's time to break down the next thing coming to English. And, you know, I said tournament circuits are concluding, that's because we have the Vanguard Zero Championship Summer that me and Kai will be commentating, so make sure you tune into that. Uh, as I'm uploading this, that'll be tomorrow. But... For the time being, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Set 7, a very exciting set. I was very hyped for it when it came out because it brought great Dayusha, but also for Aquaforce. One of the kind of like clans that got introduced was like Tier 1 instantly and stayed Tier 1 ever since being introduced, basically. So it's going to be a pretty exciting one to take a look at. Also, with this set, I want to also mention that um, normally before these, I would upload like the previous sets must have cards. We're going to stop doing that. Um, the reason why I decided to stop, I was really thinking about this for a while, because um, some of the criticisms I got on that, uh, those types of videos, which are completely valid, is like, uh, why do you do these at the end instead of at the start? And that's a completely valid point, because, yeah, not that many people really roll for cards or like start thinking about crafting cards at the end of a set, rather they do that at the start. So it's like, if anything, I should be doing them at the start, but then I also realized like a lot of the points I make in those videos are about stuff that's like really far into the future, and... For global players, you can always think about, like, see what's coming in the future through the Japanese releases. So you will know already anyway if some old card is necessary, like, let's say, Purple Trapeze is being necessary for, like, Lukir as it was in set 6. Um, and, you know, that was like a, you know, must-have card in set 2. And it's like, I feel like it's a bit redundant. And there's a lot of points where, like, you can find the cards that are going to be necessary in the future anyway through future videos. And it also kind of, like... I felt like it was a bit vague to say, like, what actually is, like, a must-have. Because some cards are, like, yeah, sure, they're necessary for, like, the next two sets or something. Like, let's say this video, we're gonna, you know, break down, like, Maelstrom stuff. So, of course, it's gonna be important for Glory Maelstrom and, like, for Maelstrom stuff in G. But it won't actually be important, um, for example, when, like, Tetra Drive comes out. Or, like, you know, when Tawas comes out or whatever. So, it's, like, it doesn't really, I don't know, it felt kind of vague. So I'm going to stop those. Instead, through these um, set reviews, I'm going to try to like emphasize really uh, which cards are very important and kind of come up in the future. So that way we can kind of just like put both in one video in a sense. And I think the set reviews overall just kind of give you a more precise look at things anyway. So I think it's it's a good way to approach it. So yeah, but anyway, set seven. So we got quite a few clans in it. Um, they're all very, very exciting. So let's kind of break it down as we go. And if you didn't see already in the usual newsletter, they always show it in the newsletter, by the way. So if you haven't signed up for the Bushiro newsletter, newsletter do um, they post like every month usually they post which is the next set coming up like a few days before and they put up like the calendar and everything as well and so the the clans if you haven't seen already that are supported in this set are uh, great nature dimension police um, aqua force being introduced uh, angel feather I might have already said it, and uh, Bermuda Triangle. On top of that, they're also introducing the trial decks early but I've already said this before the trial decks are really not worth it so don't don't do it. Like, they are the same price as a physical trial deck, and the physical TCG trial decks are amazing products, so it's really not worth your time. Or money. <laughs> but, yeah, so let's take a look at it, and just kind of do the usual. So we're going to start with what actually comes up at the top. There's no United Sanctuary clans in this, so going down to Dragon Empire, we don't have any of those either. I guess we're going to start with Dimension Police. So we're going to go in order. So, Dimension Police gets a lot of stuff in this set. Truly a lot. So first things first, uh, Dimensional Robos as an archetype become more of an archetype. Uh, so Goyusha is the starter, and he has the skill that when he is rode upon, you know, he is a forerunner. And then if your grade 2 or higher vanguard is a Dimensional Robo, you can put four of your Dimensional Robo rearguards, including him, into your soul and superior ride a Dayusha card from your deck and then draw two cards. So you can either superior ride regular Dayusha or great Dayusha, whichever one you choose. But this is a really good ability simply because if, for example, you're going first and you want to just get up to Dayusha early and then, you know, already threaten him with the crits, that's great. Or if you've just been sitting on Dayusha and your opponent pushed you to four damage but you don't have great Dayusha to ride from hand, you can use this skill as well to um, get into the great Dayusha. I've already covered this deck in very great depth in my deck in the fight, so I recommend checking it out there as well because I make more points about these cards too. Uh, then, um, not Enigman, the other starter we have is Zeal, so this is a right chain, so it works the same as every right chain, when the grade 1 rides, look at the top 7, uh, to search for the grade 2 or the grade 3, add it to hand, if you don't find one, you call it out instead, and the other skill is when a non-grade 1 Zeal, uh, rides this unit, you call it out as well, so it's the same as all those types of, uh, right chain cards. Then, uh, speaking of the grade 1, 
So this is the, you know, gets plus 1k if you have the great zero zeal in soul. And when the great 2 zeal rides on top of him, for that turn, one of your opponent's units loses 5,000 power. And if a rear guard's power were to decrease to zero, that rear guard is retired. So they added this as a new kind of thing where if you manage to use cards like zeal that reduce the opponent's unit's power and reduce that power down to zero you get to actually retire the card so that's actually a very cool ability like a cool buff that they really added to this deck um so basically you can snipe starters that's kind of the thing where when you ride the right chain con consistently and you ride the grade two you pop their starter if they have a starter that calls out of soul so that's a really nice ability honestly that i think a lot of people appreciate then we have the Die Lander. So this is a very important card for Dayusha. Uh, Rigor Circle when placed, Kalamas 1 for that turn, one of your Dimensional Robos gains plus 4k. So this instantly activates your regular Dayusha, which is very good for just one Kalamas. Uh, normally you would be paying 2. And on top of that, you don't have to give it to the Vanguard. So sometimes you can call out like a 7k grade 1 and just give it the 4k and suddenly it's 11k and it can swing unboosted into the Vanguard. So that's also one of the uses of this card. So definitely very important. Uh, then we have the Die Battles. So this card... Uh, Die Battles, as well as Die Mariner, have the exact same skill, which is when they're in the soul, you may put them into the drop zone, and if you do, for that turn, your Vanguard gains plus 3k. So this can help you reach the thresholds necessary for Dayusha's extra crit, for example, or like, you can use it in Enigma, I guess, if you want to, it doesn't restrict you from doing that. Uh, then, we have the Gogoat, so when he, his boosted attack hits, you return him to hand, never cease play. <laughs> Let's just, you know, skip over that. Then, this is one of the Zeal support cards. Uh, Rearguard Circle when placed for that turn, one of your opponent's units loses 2k power. And then if a Rearguard's power were to be reduced to 0, it is retired. So, this is like when you use the Zeals and you do like minus 5, if it's like not enough to like take out a grade 1, for example, you can put this down, do the other minus 2 to retire it. Or you can put down two of these, take out like a grade 2 with 9k power. So, it's pretty good for that reason, um, and definitely quite nice. Then we have the Speed Star. Uh, when placed for that turn, another unit gains plus 2k. Isn't really run in Dimension Police. I don't think it's very necessary, to be honest, simply because, like, you have other things to play right now. It never really will come back either. Uh, and then we have the Self Damager. So, you know, if you have four or less damage, put the top card of your deck face down into Damage Zone, and then at the end of turn, put one of your face down damages uh, back to deck, or face up if you don't have any face downs. And then, uh, moving on. We have the Grade 2s. So one of the universal Grade 2s that a lot of people use in Dimension Police is Operator Girl Mika, because she's the only form of advantage generation, basically, especially in D-Robo. So her skill is, when her attack hits, Kanomas 2 to draw 1. So, very simple, it's just, you know, it's just the Maiden of Libra, but it is useful in this deck that literally doesn't draw anything. So... And no, Goyusha's draw does not count, by the way, because you're still minusing a lot from your field in order to draw those two cards in compensation. So it's still a minus, you just get to superior ride. Then, uh, Die Dragon is a, you know, Dimensional Robo name, but on top of that, he is a 12k attacker for Dimensional Robos, will be played for a very, very, very long time. This card, I think, is literally not dropped from Dimensional Robos until very, very late G. So we keep running Die Dragon like. He's run throughout the Break Ride era because he he can attack without a boost um, if you lock because uh, Reverse Ayusha locks your own rear guards so you can lock the Grade One behind him and he can still attack for twelve uh, against your opponents like zero power Vanguard or something so um, this will be used in Break Rides this will be used in Legion this will be used in G especially because you can call it from Die Earth and just overall die dragon will always be useful so you definitely want to pick those up if you're planning to play dimension please at like any point in time uh then moving on we have the zeal grade two so it has the same skill actually when the grade three zeal rides on top of him for that turn one of your opponent's units loses 5k power and if a rear guard's power were to drop to zero they are retired so again very important for zeal 10k vanilla for uh dimensional robos very important you know for goyusha we need that dimensional robo name so it's super important in my opinion uh then this is the grade two self damager then we have the Cosmic Rider. So his skill is when placed for that turn, one of your units gets plus 2k power. So nothing too crazy. Then we have a uh, another piece of Zeal support. So this one is the same as the grade 1. When placed for that turn, one of your units, opponent's units loses 2k 2,000 power. And if the power were to drop to 0 on a rear guard, they are retired. So again, you use this in the grade 1 and the Zeals in conjunction to basically just start popping your opponent's board. That's kind of what you do. And it's 
pretty damn strong, let's put it that way. Um, one important thing is that this is the rank reward Dayusha, but Dayusha in itself gets a buff in this game um, after this set comes out. So what is that buff you ask? Well, he gets a new skill added, which is in hand, you may uh, banish this card, and if you do, you randomly add one of the following four cards. Die Battles, Die Lander, Die Mariner, or Die Dragon. So the four cards we looked at, the two, the three different grade one uh, dimensional robos or Die Dragon, one of those four you randomly add. And Die Mariner and Die Battles are technically the least useful like after you're on grade three, but if you're using Goyusha, they're useful. Uh, Die Battles is always good because Kalmos 1 plus 4k, you know, is good for activating Daisha himself. And Die Dragon is always like your high roll because you got an intercept out of like grade three. So it's actually, you have more intercepts per deck ratio than your opponent does, which means you can kind of survive a bit longer. Um, but the nice thing is, is that this also, not only does it turn on your uh, Goyusha easier, so like you can just basically like, if you're going first, you can just banish all your Dayushas from hand to generate Dimensional Robos, put them down on the board, use Goyusha, superior right into the, the Dayusha left in your deck, and then swing in with a crit um, while they're on grade 1, which is pretty strong. Uh, so, it's pretty good for that reason, and yeah, that skill is definitely very much appreciated. Then, looking forward at the actual new cards, we have Great Dayusha. So, Great Dayusha, very, very appreciated newcomer. Um, honestly, like, we are in currently in set 9, so in break rides right now in JP, and the last couple days I've been jamming this deck again because I kind of missed it and it's been fun I've been picking up wins too like I think I'm currently in like a three win streak with this against like break right deck so I was like oh it's fun to come back to it so great Asia skill is number break four when he attacks the vanguard if you have two or more dimensional robos in your soul for that battle he gains plus 2000 power plus one crit and he's also a cross ride with Dayusha meaning he's a 13k base so together with that he's 15k attack so even with a 6k boost that's 21 so you might be thinking, well, he just gained some power and a crit. It's like basically what um, Salome does. But keep in mind, he's a cross ride, so even Diamantes cannot touch him um, on that first attack. We'll take a look at Diamantes a bit later. And on top of that, like having a costless crit and you know being able to hit for 21 very easily is also very much appreciated. So Great Dayusha is a great card, <laughs> pun not intended. But uh, it's also nice because this card will actually be coming back quite a lot. So. It isn't really run too much with Reverse Dayusha, I think we'll be running it as like a one of. but then when the Legion Dykeiser comes out, then you're going to obviously come back to this guy because they Legion together. And then on top of that, um, that Legion Dykeiser will be used throughout most of G, so you will still be using at least like two copies of Great Dayusha. So it's going to be interesting how the Great 3 lineup will shape up over time, but Great Dayusha will definitely be coming back, so keep that in mind. It will be coming back for sure. Um, and then we have Zeal. Zeal is like the main grade 3 of the Zeal deck, and his limit break is once per turn you may count on us 2, and for that turn, uh, for each one of your units, your opponent's units lose 1k power. And then of course, as always, you know, their rear guards that reach 0 power are retired. So basically when you have all 5 rear guards on your vanguard, you are at 6 different units on the board, so meaning that's a plus, that's a minus 6, sorry, to all of your opponent's units, including the vanguard. So that's pretty big, and if you rode him from the grade 2 that turn, that's another minus 5 to one of their units, and then, you know, use the supporting pieces to do even more minus power. So this deck is not that strong, as you can imagine, it's very peace reliant, and, you know, the whole retired gimmick is like it's cool but it's pretty hard to consistently do uh so that's one thing to keep in mind but they help you a little bit with that by giving him a new skill which is a vanguard circle when his attack hits the opponent's vanguard you persona blast and then uh you do another minus 5k power to one of the opponent's units and then as usual retire it if it if a rear guard reaches zero power so this is like also a starter sniper but also can like help to finish up some units that they had in the back or something um, on top of that. So it's a pretty nice gimmick, but for now, uh, just not that great. Might have to wait for his like Legion to come out to make him a bit better. Bit unfortunate because this was like his peak, you know, he doesn't really get much support until like the start of G basically. Then we got some generic cards, Enigman Cyclone. Uh, when his attack hits a Vanguard, uh, if before the attack his power was 14k or higher, then you retire one of your opponent's rear guards. So just another Enigma, basically. Then we have the Mega Blast. Some people actually use this card. So at the beginning of your main phase, Soul Charge 1, and he gains plus 2k power. And then his Vanguard Circle Act skill is Soul Blast 6, Canal 4. For that turn, all of your opponent's units lose 8,000 power. And then uh, any rear guard that, that's power dropped to zero is retired. So minus 8k is pretty legit. Uh, so this could be used as like the main backup for a um, Zeal deck, 
but it's it's a it's a hefty cost, you know. Zeal itself wants to counter blast, so this wants to counter blast almost everything. So keep that in mind. There's no counter charging in DP, DP. Keep that in mind. Then we have the Lady Justice. She is just a 12k attacker when she attacks the Vanguard, so this will be used as your go-to heal trigger for the time being. And then finally, we have the Tsukikage. So this is when it's boosted for that battle gains plus 3k. So damn, we already took up a fair bit of time just talking about DP, but DP in this set um, is not tier one or anything. It's very fun though. Like especially if you're a, a DP fan in general, or if you're into Dimension Police in the TCG, or like you just wanted to relive what it was like playing this clan back in the day, because this like Dimension Police was only ever considered like really top tier in the Legion era, and it never really came back to that kind of like limelight too much in like Dialiner, I guess in recent uh, last year's standard format um, it was considered pretty high tier too on release but kind of, kind of like crept out pretty fast but um, this deck like especially Great Daisha is super super fun and I really recommend it you know I am biased of course because Dimension Police is my favorite clan of all you know I have Dykeiser literally in my ending uh, of my like my outro so of course I'm very biased about it but I personally find the the clan very very fun and this deck especially Great Daisha has been very fun and we're gonna have to wait quite a while until Dykeiser and Reverse Daisha come out so just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Uh, don't take the deck too seriously. Like, don't expect it to be like a competitive god, but definitely have fun with it. And I lied earlier by saying that we have no United Sanctuary clans in this set. Of course we do. We have Angel Feather. So, Angel Feather got some nice support. We have a new starter in uh, Nahas. So, her skill is, if your Vanguard is uh, Aphrodite, and then you can put her and Baruku into your soul, and then search your deck for a Metatron and ride it and draw one card. So, this is kind of the Criff for Angel Feather, because this get, lets you superior ride into your Metatron. But honestly, this playstyle is not that great. Um, you're better off using Sunny Smile Angel to just get an extra heal, to be honest. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, as someone that really likes playing Angels, just, I, I play this like a fair bit too, so I really, you know, take my word for it. Then, we have the Baroku that we mentioned. So her skill is, when in the damage zone, you can turn her face down to give one your Vanguard for that turn plus 3000 power. Right now, this is irrelevant. Um, this was kind of relevant in the original TCG because Metatron was worded differently, um, but not worth using uh, unless you're using that starter. But I think, you know, it's partially because of that that I don't recommend um, using neither the starter, neither this grade one, uh, or the grade two counterpart either, which is Aphrodite. So Aphrodite says the exact same thing. In the damage zone, you can turn her face down, and then for that turn, uh, your Vanguard gains plus 3k power. So again, it's just doesn't really do anything like the extra power is not really necessary because like Sham CL is already buff Metatron doesn't really need the power because if you put a pony behind her she's going to be absolutely massive anyway so that's kind of you know I don't know these these supporting pieces weren't that necessary I guess and let's just look at the last few supporting pieces this is the Elcyon. so on Vanguard Circle when attacks you can discard one to give it plus 6k power and on Reaver Circle when attacks you can discard one to give it plus 3k power so it's like a bad 13k attacker uh, and then we have uh, area so when another grade 3 rear guard is placed then she gains plus 3k power so interesting is all I can really say about this so if you're an angel feather player you're probably sitting there thinking like wow I mean we've been over all these cards but neither of them really seem to be that great you know whether it's grade ones or grade twos or or anything like that but Rest assured, Metatron actually is a great card. So Metatron, she is um, a new grade 3 Vanguard that we do want to run because of how strong she is. And her limit break skill is once per turn, you may count us one and put two of your rear guards into your damage zone face down. And then you call two cards from your damage zone. So this is a pretty cool ability because it basically means that if you have the Pegasi on the board, you can basically use her skill to just buff them up and exchange the targets. Furthermore, you can also call no seals from this, and the no seals will proc, letting you swap even more times, you know, once if you call one, twice if you call two, which buffs up the Pegasi even more. So, for that reason alone, she is pretty good, simply because you get to buff up your field, and therefore, you can set up a field that, you know, when you're playing out your turn, it does not lose to defensive. So, if you got to go first and your opponent didn't really set up any intercepts, um, but... You know, or let's say, like, not even go first, but let's say your opponent's at, like, two and doesn't really have any intercepts. Or if you're on the Hesse deal, uh, if that's her name again, I always forget it, uh, this girl. Uh, the Aramiel, sorry, Aramiel. Hermieres, I think she's called. <laughs> um, but if, like, you can use her to do the multi-attack, right? 
Um, and basically, because of all that, the ponies will be really big, and you can basically hit them for so much, like for such high power that you don't lose the defensives, and you can push them from like two to five, and the next turn finish it off. So that's pretty good. She also gains 3k when she attacks the Vanguard, so basically with like any booster, she can hit for 21, which is pretty nice. So Metatron itself uh, is a good card. Um, will it be useful in the future? Not so much. In Celestial, she gets dropped pretty hard, and then at least I feel like she will be. There won't really be space for her anyway. Um, and then she does get like an updated form in the future, but not really like a cross ride, or I think it was a cross ride, I can't remember. Um, but it's not really like, doesn't really need her. Some people used to also run her, like, I think some people used her in G a little bit, but she was like the suboptimal grade 3 target. So she never really comes back. So, like, if you're not really vibing with angels right now and you're waiting for like future angel support you can skip on it in my opinion but for like this set that it comes out in she does push angels into like tier two i would say more or less i can't remember what i said back in the day but <laughs> you know you just gotta work with it <laughs> just work with it all right so now we're actually done here now let's move on we had uh novas we didn't have in the set dp we looked at already i think all that's left is bermuda aqua force and great nature let's leave aqua force for last because it's going to be pretty chunky bit to talk about. Let's talk about Great Nature next. This one is also pretty short because there's not that many new cards, but they're very impactful. So we have uh, the Gardening Mole. Gardening Mole skill is when there is a rear guard of yours that is retired during the end phase. So another rear guard. Uh, you may kind of almost want to put this unit into the soul, and if you do, you can put that rear guard that was retired back into your hand. So, for example, if it's something like a, I don't know, like a duckbill or something that you wanted to like reuse next turn, you can basically just bring it back into your hand and then use it again. So it doesn't, it's, it's a nice effect, but it costs Calmas, which like the um, Blackboard Ohm doesn't. So also an entity plus one. So it's like kind of, it's not really run. Let's just put it like that. Uh, then moving on, we have a few new weird ones. We have the Recorder Dog. So Recorder Dog is a part of three card series of cards, I guess. Uh, so this one says, when he's retired during your end phase, you may count on one to call a vocal chicken from your deck to rearguard circle. So vocal chicken, we're going to take a look at later, but a vocal chicken is your grade three and usually your heal trigger. So you don't really want to run this card simply because it basically calls your heals out of your deck. So it's not really worth it. Uh, then we have the sharp Beaver. So his skill is when he's called, uh, you may give another one of your grade three units plus three K. So this can be a rear guard or vanguard, but usually, you know, you don't really want to be running this. It feels like a little bit of a waste of space, I would say, simply because you have other really good grade ones to run instead. And then finally, we have the soft tank uh, sloth. So this card is actually quite nice because it is a counter charger for the clan. So what he does is, when he is retired during the end phase, you may Soul Blast 1 to counter charge 2. So that's actually pretty big. Um, not really going to be used right now, but whenever um, Great Nature reaches like a more counter blast heavy playstyle, we're definitely going to be seeing this card come into play. Like Even as a one of, you know, it's going to be pretty nice to uh, run into, just because Soul Blast is not really a resource that you worry about too much right now in Great Nature, and in the future, hard to say, you know, with how they buff and nerf things. But yeah, it's pretty pretty nice card for what it is. Uh, then moving on, I believe this card is new. This is the 7k when it hits, when you have like four more other rear guards, you draw one. So every clan has that. So maybe it's not new, but uh, looking at the recorder dog and chicken series, we have the Pianica cat. Pianica cat says, when retired during your end phase, you may count one to search your deck for a recorder dog. So that's the one we looked at. So it searches a grade one. So if you had to retire one of your interceptors, which you sometimes do um, because of Polaris, then you can basically search a grade one. But we don't care about that too much. What we care about is the actual vocal chicken. So vocal chicken says, when he's retired during the end phase, you may count one and search your deck for the uh, Pianica cat and call it so this is really good because you can call out a great three attack with it you know buff it up and retire it at the end and then count one to call out an intercept which you originally did not have so that sets up an extra intercept for you which is really really appreciated so this is definitely the go-to heal and i think this will be seeing some use in zero for quite some time because how strong intercepts are you know just based on simple effects and of course the spotlight of great nature in this set and the card that really brought this deck to the spotlight and even today is still considered a very competitive deck in zero is polaris so polaris says limit break four when he attacks the vanguard you may count us one and stand one of your rear guards and give that unit plus 4k for that turn and then at the end of that turn you retire that unit so 
It's a plus 4k buff, meaning that, for example, if you're attacking with a, uh, let's say you have a grade 3 10k vanilla, or like 10k power grade 3, boosted by a 7k power grade 1. So that's a 17k column. Let's say the grade 3 attacks unboosted into a rearguard with its 10k power, then your other rearguard attacks into another rearguard, Polaris attacks into the vanguard, Polaris uses its skill to stand that grade 3, which is now 14k, and with its 7k that's 21, hitting for magic numbers for an extra attack, usually getting over a defensive trigger. You know, so that's really really nice and being able to push out you know two damage per turn in great nature is very strong because of how much it filters how much it draws how much power it has you know building up through its rear guard so polaris is amazing on that alone and on top of that when he attacks the vanguard he gains plus 3k power so that means he's going to be a 21k swinger with a 7k boost so that's also very very good so polaris is one of the best great threes for great nature to ever come out i would say in zero at least and like sure shot more when that comes out is going to be great and reverse leopold is going to be amazing too but we'll see if it actually replaces this because you know having extra attacks in zero is really strong it's amazingly powerful so that's great nature let's look at bermuda next so bermuda got some big support got quite a lot of support you know to be completely honest with you and we have a little bit uh to take a look at here so i already covered this deck as well and the main deck here that was supported is coral so it's the usual right chain when you write the grade one look at the top seven cards for the grade two and the grade three add it to hand if you don't call this out of your soul and if you write a non-grade one coral then you also call her out uh so that's the usual thing then uh moving forward we have the grade one coral, so this is, you know, when you, the, when the grade two coral rides on top of her, you look at the, oh sorry, when the non-grade two coral, so when not the shiny star coral rides on top of her, you look at the top seven cards of your deck to find the correct grade two coral and ride it instead. So this is kind of where that type of ride chain starts, I think, because this is then used by like Artemis and stuff, um, and the future ride chains. So it's a pretty nice ride chain to like fix the grade two basically, which is pretty appreciated in zero because the deck size is smaller. Then. We have the uh, on plays Kalamas 1 and bounce one of your other rear guards. So not really used right now as much as I know um, because Kalamas is quite precious in this deck, but still an interesting card in concept. Uh, rear guard circle when placed, Soul Blast 1. Look at the top seven cards of your deck to find a Piske and add it to your hand. So Piske is her. This, this is Piske. So basically you can Soul Blast 1 to find yourself another grade 1 to boost with. But not really run because again we have a lot of good grade ones but the grade one that is run in some decks is of course the self damager which is very important for the limit break decks so this one does see some play then moving on we have the grade two coral so her skill is pretty nice because her skill is vanguard circle when her attack hits the vanguard you can bounce one of your front row rear guards back to your hand and then if you have the grade one coral in your soul and then if you have the grade one coral in your soul, so if you didn't miss the right chain, you get to also bounce one of your back row rear guards too. So what this lets you do is basically like, you can call PGs for example, and just bounce them after she hits. Or like, you know, you make a column of like, Girls Rock Rio and a PG, bounce the Girls Rock Rio to draw a card, and then bounce the PG on top of that to, you know, guard with it later on. So, very cool card because it lets you play much more aggressive grade 2 turns, which is very appreciated in my opinion. So I think it's definitely a pretty cool card in that sense. Um, also, like, the Corals are pretty important, like, if you plan to play Coral in the future, so definitely keep that in mind. Also, Girls Rock Rio becomes a tournament reward, the V-Coupon reward. Then, moving on, uh, we have a couple more triple rares and a double rare. So, the other triple rare introduced here... Wait, did I, did I miss... I think I missed some grade 2s. Yeah, we did miss some grade... One grade 2, which is the self-damager, so nothing too important. But... We also have the Grade 2 Pacifica, Eternal Idol Pacifica, very strong card. Limbrick 4, when she attacks, you may count on us 2 and bounce 2 of your rearguards back to your hand. Then you search your deck for any card you want and call it. So, this is really cool because this is an extra attack. This is a 4th attack generator in Bermuda Triangle, which is of course unheard of so far, you know, outside of Reindeer. So this is of course very nice, it's also cross ride with top idol Pacifica, which I think is very much appreciated, and just having this kind of like multi-attack is definitely very cool. Also meshes pretty well with the upcoming break ride, but that's, you know, that's for JP, not for English. Um, then, finally, we have the Coral. So Coral Grade 3, the first one says, uh, this is Aurora Star Coral. Let me make 4, when she attacks the Vanguard, she gets plus 5k, so it's just like Garmore, basically. And then uh, she gains plus 1k if you have the Grade 2 Coral in your soul, you know, as all right chains do. And then she has a second skill, which is once per turn, Kalmas 1, Soul Charge 1, and then bounce one of your rearguards back to your hand. So she doesn't straight up, like, draw you cards, 
but she can bounce your Rio back, which will draw you cards. So by that extent, you are technically generating an advantage. So she's pretty good, but you can actually skip her because Shangri-La Star Coral has the ability to put cards from your hand into your soul, which is Limbrick 4, Vanguard Circle once per turn, Kalmas 1, for that turn she gains plus 3k power. Then you can also bounce one of your rear guards back to your hand. And then you choose one Coral from your hand, whether it's grade 1, 2, or 3, whichever 3 by the way, and put it into your soul. If you did put one, you draw two. So this not only lets you skip the other Coral in order to achieve cross ride, because this is a cross ride with the other Coral we just looked at, but it also draws you extra cards, it bounces you a rear guard, which means you can use stuff like Rio, and it's just it's great. So this is actually the first um, like properly competitive uh, Bermuda deck in zero, which is pretty nice. You know, it saw some success in JP uh, when the set came out. So even now, it's still considered pretty decent because this deck also like draws so much that you can play crits, which is pretty rare for you know for Bermuda. So that's definitely very nice. And finally, we have the main star of the show, Aqua Force. So we have a lot to take a look at here with Aqua Force. All these starters. I think the grade ones go all the way to like um, this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, to this one, and then these ones are new. But I think for grade twos, we also go all the way to this one. And then for grade threes, we go all the way to, of course, glory. <laughs> so there's a lot to take a look at here. So let's just get into it. Let's break it down right off the bat. So we have several starters. First one is the Aqua Breath Draco Kid. So his skill is, of course, Forerunner, and he has a Rearguard Circle skill, you could put him into the soul, and give one of your units uh, plus 1000 power on the following skill. Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, when his attack hits the Vanguard, if it's the fourth or more battle of that turn, you draw one. So, typically you can give this to your Maelstrom, because it needs to be the fourth attacker, and just draw an extra card, so it's pretty good for being able to just abuse that, but there will be an even better this kind of starter in the future that lets you draw cards, so that's going to be something to be excited about, but even now, it's pretty cool. And also, when Title Assault comes out, I think you can loop him as 4th and 5th attack in the future, so that'll be pretty nice to do too. But of course, this has to hit, so that's a bit of a different topic, but yeah. Then the other starter they got is Try Hole Draco Kid. Try Hole Draco Kid says, uh, Forerunner, and then in the front row Rearguard Circle, when he attacks for the third or more battle, he gains plus 3k power, so he's an 8k attacker as a starter, which is nice, but not really run that much. Starter that saw a lot of popularity when the set came out and then dropped off completely is the Astorea. So her skill is when the boosted attack hits a Vanguard, you may come us one and put her into the soul to stand one of your rear guards. At the start, this seemed really good because people were like, whoa, you can like restand your rears, and that's like extra attack. So of course it's nice, um, especially if you didn't boost with one of them. Um, but you know, with the way that zero works and the you know the damage mechanic works, it doesn't usually like you don't stand anything important. So people dropped it either for the uh, Aqua Breath, or for Eric, and Eric is just your generic, can almost one put him into the soul to look at the top 5 cards of your deck and add a grade 3 from among them, so grade 3 searcher. Then of course, perfect guards are Pascal, then we have a card that is run, which is the Splash Assault, front row rearguard circle when it's a third battle of that turn or more, gain plus 3k, so this is basically, if it's a third battle, it can attack for 10k, which means it can take out intercepts, which is what you want, so usually you go first battle, ignores intercept, goes to Vanguard, and then second battle goes rear, third battle, like this, goes rear as well, and then fourth battle goes Vanguard again. So, Splash Assault did see some play. I think I used it in my deck and fight as well, so that's going to be a point to make. Uh, Eugen, Storm Rider Eugen. So the first of the Storm Riders, they all have the same skills. So, he's a 6k power grade 1, but when he attacks the Vanguard for that turn, if it's the, if it's the first battle of that turn, then uh, he gains plus 3k, and the skill that after he battles, he switches with the rear guard behind him. So basically, you can promote like a grade 2 or something and, you know, pop out an intercept. Um, and then his other skill is once per turn, Kalamas 1. And for that turn, if it's the first battle of this turn, then he ignores intercept, but only on his first battle. So they all have the same skill. And we're going to look at the others in a bit. So the grade 1 is never really run because the power is too low, but the grade 2s and 3s are. Then we have the, uh, the Penguin. His skill is rear circle when placed, soul blast 2 to draw a card. This is run, of course, because you have no other use for your soul in this deck. Teo is your 8k vanilla, which is run as well to make magic numbers. Uh, this card is not run. The uh, Kipros, Kalmas 1 to give him plus 1k, not necessary. Uh, the 
Accelerated Command, the Seahorse, he is run. Uh, he's on place for that turn, given another unit plus 2k. Let's you hit over cross ride numbers, basically, and there will be a lot of cross rides running around, um, so will be important for that reason. Self Damager is very important for Maelstrom. Maelstrom, I think, is the one deck that runs the most amount of self damagers, like even more than Azel later on. Um, so definitely very important because Limit Break is like what this deck lives and dies by. So, of course, super important for, for Maelstrom. Then we have Cynthia. Cynthia is when her boosted attack hits you may discard one draw one. This is also run in Maelstrom um, So you'll see like I'm mentioning a lot of cards that are run in Maelstrom But of course they're run in like different builds different variations of the deck um, But in this like this card is basically used to just like discard your non necessary pieces and draw into your like necessary stuff like your Diamantes, Basil, Maelstrom, you know all that kind of stuff. So Pretty cool for that reason. And then finally we have the Dorothea. When she boosts the Vanguard, if it's the third or more battle of that turn, then for that battle she gains plus 4k. So she's a 10k booster. Sadly, not really played um, because Maelstrom itself gets enough power. These other cards are coming out in the next set. Yeah, next one. Then we have Algos. So Algos, um, Algos and Valeria are both like cool cards that have cool effects that aren't really run sadly anymore, but they were when the set first came out. So uh, skill is... When the attack hits a Vanguard on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, if it's the fourth or more battle of that turn, you draw a card. So keep in mind, this actually collides with Maelstrom for that fourth battle timing. So you can use it when you're not on Limit Break to draw an extra card, but on Limit Break, you always want to be fourth attacking with the Maelstrom, because he draws and retires without hitting. Um, and then this second skill is, Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, this is a new one. When it attacks, if it's the fourth or more battle of that turn, you may count on us one to give it plus 5k power. Keep in mind, until Glory comes out, this deck does not count as much at all. So you can actually get away with using effects like this. But even then, it's like not necessary or like not relevant enough, I would say. Then Valeria, we mentioned, is the same as Algost, except instead of drawing when she hits, she retires one when she hits. So I don't think it's worth spending too much time talking about her. But very important grade two that you will be running four of, no arguments, is Basil. So Basil and Diamantes will be dropped um, over time, especially when we get stuff like Tidal Assault, but right now this is the only way of like making fourth attack. So has the exact same skills as Eugen. So gets 3k when it attacks the Vanguard and then swaps with the thing behind behind it after the battle, and then you can come us one, and if it's the first, ba first battle of that turn, he ignores Intercept. So very important four of. Then we have Coral Assault, if it's a third battle of that turn or war, gains plus 3k, so it's a 12k attacker, which is really nice, because this can hit even MLB, but of course this is, you know, one of your optimal, like, second or third attacks during that turn. And then we have Lazarus, the 10k Vanilla, which will be played as well. Then, of course, Self Damagers, great two Self Damagers, the both Self Damagers are run in this deck. And then before we look at Maelstrom, let's look at some of the other supporting cards. So we have this, um, Ditan, so his... Kill is just when he's boosted, he gains plus 3k. So you don't really boost in this deck much because you go Basil, unboosted, into a grade 2, unboosted. Vanguard is boosted, but then the other column is usually boosted, but usually don't have enough cards to actually like drop down a boost. So the other card we run instead is the, the Xenophon. So Xenophon is when it's his third battle... If, when he attacks, if it's the third battle or more of that turn, he gains plus 3k. So that's also, you know, a 13k attacker, can hit cross rights for free, and also just hit other rears, which is pretty nice. Um, then we have some of the backup rights. So one of them is the Hydro Hurricane Dragon. So 10k base, but he has a limit break, which says when he attacks the Vanguard for that battle, he gains plus 3k. And if it's the fourth battle of that turn or more, he gains the following ability. If the attack hits, you may count us two, and then... Uh, retire all of your opponent's rear guards. So you read this and you're like, wow, retire all of your opponent's rear guards for only counting about two? That's insane. But keep in mind that you already retire two by attacking into their intercepts. So it's like, is it really that great to just retire their back row? Especially when Maelstrom can retire their back row too? It's actually not that great. Like, you can run this as a backup if you really need to, but for the time being, like, it's not that necessary. Like, your grade three slots are usually four Maelstrom, four Diamantes, and then, like, four of the 13k attackers. So if you need to, like, slot in one thing then yeah sure hydro hurricane will work um and then we also have naval gazer the triple rare that is literally like it's it's played as like that one of or like a four of backup ride but it will never come back after that um so naval gazer says when he attacks the vanguard he gains plus 3k for that battle and if it's a third battle of that turn or more he gains the following ability when the attack hits you may count on us two to stand two of your rear guards so you can basically stand like a front row and back row rear guard to stand an entire column and if you give them some triggers they can hit, otherwise they won't. <laughs> so that's kind of unfortunate, but it's pretty cool. His other skill is Vanguard Circle. If it's the third battle of that turn,
turn or more, he gains plus 3k. So he basically gets plus 6 total, so it's a 17 base. And then we've been talking about him a lot. Oh wait, actually, one more side grade 3 we didn't talk about yet. Uh, the Di David, when he attacks, can almost want to give him plus 3k. So basically a Sagramore. And then we also didn't talk about this guy, who is actually run as a uh, like a 4 of heal trigger sometimes, which is the... Vashiris, so when his attack hits, you may discard one and draw one. So this is really good for like cycling through your units. So if you don't care to have the 13k attacker in this guy, you can run this instead as like your go-to second battle like rearguard attacker. Um, so because this can hit rearguards to do the discard one, draw one. So that's very nice uh, to help filter through the deck. So I, do I actually quite like him in retrospect. I didn't really run him at the time of this set coming out, but in retrospect, I really did like this card a lot. And then finally we have... Maelstrom. So, uh, actually, before we look at Maelstrom, the final card is uh, Diamantes. So, it has the same skill as Basil and Eugen. So, it gains 3k when he attacks for the first battle and then swaps with the thing behind it. And then you can also rearguard circle once per turn, Katamas 1, to let him ignore intercept on his first attack. But now we get to Maelstrom. So, you've been doing these four attacks per turn for what reason exactly? Maelstrom's Limit Break. So, Maelstrom's Limit Break says when he attacks the Vanguard, if it's the fourth battle of that turn or more, you. Give him, he gains plus 5k for that battle. And the following ability, at the end of the battle that he attacked, you draw one and retire one of your opponent's rearguards. This used to be an on-hit counterblast one ability in the TCG, but instead in zero they said, it does need to hit, it does need to counterblast one, we'll give him another extra 5k power on top of that. So this is really, really good. Like being able to basically plus two every turn for no counterblast by just doing four attacks, which is pretty easy for this deck because you run four Diamantes and four Basil, is really, really good. So of course this deck was top meta when it came out and it still is thanks to Glory in, in, in the JP server. And it's just great. It's a really, really great ab ability. And then his other skill is when he attacks the Vanguard, he gains plus 3k. So with that limit break together, that's plus 8k, so he's 19k. So with any booster, like with a 7k booster, that's 26, hitting for magic numbers. But that's that's just amazing. It's just amazing. So Maelstrom is an amazing card. Um, like, Maelstrom will be coming back in the future as well, like I said at the start of the video. But a lot of these other cards, like, yeah, they'll be useful when Glory comes out, but like... Aquaforce goes through a lot of different builds, like a lot of different like boss units and stuff, so a lot of these old cards aren't actually used much in them. Like Basil, if you if you believe me, Basil actually gets dropped, you know, and Diamandis gets dropped. Um, you know, self damagers we'll see, like the penguin definitely comes back, but you know, a lot of these cards are like really amazing now and like going forward, but will they be amazing in a year? Not really. So that's something to keep in mind. But on that note, uh, we are hitting up close to 45 minutes here, so I think it's going to be a good time to end it right then and there. But yeah, so this was the set analysis for set 7, a very good set overall, has some really strong support for every clan that uh, is supported, and you know, some top meta clans are introduced here as well, and a very popular clan as well, Aquaforce, is introduced too. So, very cool to see it, honestly, and I think a lot of people enjoy it, I myself did too, and it's overall a pretty nice meta on top of that, so it's definitely quite cool, and the next set will be kind of the icing on the cake to finish off the Limit Break meta, but on that note, that's gonna be it for me today, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time, bye-bye. <laughs>